Chapter 61 The Dodgy Blaster 8 Dealing with the council was a total snooze-fest, as always, even after an hour of monotonous back-and-forth that started to drive me insane, they still never allowed Isla to join the mission. Having not had her hopes up in the first place, Isla wasn't up in arms about it, though she did retreat to her chambers in the temple for a bit of meditation after saying she'd meet me back at the bar later tonight. Going for another round tonight's probably on the table since Force Healing fixed up the limp Ayla was sporting. Force Healing, you've got to love it. Right now, though, sadly, I had something else on my mind other than banging Ayla in umpteen different positions. Stepping through the various halls of the temple, I found my destination. Being a multi-purpose facility for all of the Jedi's intergalactic shenanigans, it houses a variety of subspaces geared towards other aspects of running an intergalactic religious order. The largest of which, not including the Jedi High Council, are the Council of First Knowledge, which predominantly procures advice on matters requiring ancient Jedi wisdom, whatever that means. All one know is that they're the ones who come up with the training curriculum for the younglings, as well as overseeing the Jedi archives. This council, for the most part, consists of older Jedi masters whose remaining lifespan is better spent looking after the immense amount of knowledge that the Jedi Order safe keeps, rather than hobbling headfirst into an army of droids and eating a blaster bolt to the face. Joining the suborganizations powerful enough to warrant the last two of the four temple towers are the Council of Reconciliation and the Council of Reassignment. The first work to create diplomatic treaties between warring planets, along with the Galactic Senate's Republic Diplomatic Corps. The second being the ones responsible for reassigning the youngling rejects that failed to show enough potential to garner an apprenticeship, leaving them to be shipped off to the Jedi Service Corps, also known as the Loser Brigade. Other than the four big ones, there's a number of other smaller groups that have seen a sudden boom of explosive growth thanks to the reignition of war. Under that banner is the Jedi Engineering Corps, which is where the next few hours of my time is going to be spent. Stepping through the automatic doors, I entered one of the Engineering Corps workshops. Instantly, the smell of ozone assaulted my nostrils, a truly pungent scent that was a total bastard to get off clothes. Unlike my own, this workshop was strangely clean and orderly. Everything was neat and tidy, a far cry from the scrap heap I usually work in, one that is only going to get worse with the huge shipment of droid parts that's on its way. Hunched over one of the worktops was Anakin, face covered by a blacked-out welding mask firing into one part or another. Completely consumed by his work, he never noticed my approach, allowing me to come in close and get a decent look at what he was making. A kind of gyroscope, slightly different to what I had for my prototype B-Wing. To the untrained eye, it might not look much different, but upon close inspection, Anakin's was far more refined and smaller to boot. Separating the flame from the intricate metallic module, he rolled his thumb across a level and the bright blue flame fizzled out. Coming back to his senses, finally noticed the large Dethomerane looming over his shoulder. Raising his eyebrows and tilting his head back slightly in a combination of startle and greeting, Anakin said, Never noticed you there. Should have called out when you arrived. Setting the welding tool to the workbench, he continued, So I took a look at your ship, flicking his head at the B-wing. Nice design, by the way. Never thought about using gyro stabilization in a starship before. Might try adding something similar to my fighter once this is over. Modestly, I replied, what can I say? A ship built from someone built different is obviously going to be built different. Well, it is something new. I'll give you that. Anakin commented with a half smile before adding, you know the problem you said you were having with the stabilization? I, man, nearly became one with the force testing it out. It was fine till the low-speed autopilot came off which admittedly was quite early, but as soon as I changed to manual, the gyroscope went off its nut. The cockpit wouldn't keep in line with the ship, and it started going backwards, was a ball hair off dying man. I nodded calmly, as if reversing into 240 kel per hour lane wasn't a more dangerous than Geonosis. Yeah, well I found out why there was a disconnect between the cockpit and the chassis. 
the two gyros interfered with each other, knocking them out of sync and, of course, causing the reversing problem. Anakin told me with a smirk adorning his features. Blinking at the relatively similar issue that I somehow managed to miss, I replied, Mmm, it's almost as if I was sober when designing it. Ignoring his mildly judgmental glare, I listened as Anakin walked over to the B-Wing. I added a magnaseal casing here. He said pointing at that rectangular-ish box within the Sharship's body, so you won't have any interference problems anymore. I also modified the previous gyroscope, it should calibrate the ship slightly faster than before now. Using the force in a fine-tuned manner, he inserted the updated gyroscope into position and connected all the wires in one swift motion. Once complete, the ship sprang to life, engines roared awake, Repulsor lift hummed the ship a foot or two off the floor and the dashboard inside the cockpit brightened. As Anakin sealed the B-Wing's hull shut, I said, Nice man, cheers for that, saved me a lot of hassle. But on to more important things. I'm curious to know why you were in the Senate District last night, especially since we were all granted a few days leave. Throwing an accusing look at Anakin, not forgetting to bounce my eyebrow tats up and down as I spoke. Averting his eyes and reddening ever so slightly, Anakin barely managed to squeeze out. I was, Padme asked. The hand that snaked around to the back of his head must have done something, as his eye lit up with misled intelligence. Senator Amidala asked me to review a new legislation for Naboo. He confidently spoke. So Senate business then, suppose I can't blame you, I wouldn't mind reviewing with the senator either. I smirked, placing a hand on my chin, wantonly adding, me and her, with a nice bit of privacy, oft could could think of another few things than need reviewing. The most urgent once being how she can pack all of that arse in those sweet white leggings. Anakin froze up, his brain struggling to compute another man talking about his wife in such a manner, continuing though I said, you know the ones I'm talking about, the white gear she had on in Geonosis. Fuck me, she was looking fine that day. Proper wank bank material, that. Abu way. Words failed Anakin, but the force surrounding his messiah-like self flew out of whack. Being on top of a nexus only made it easier to comprehend the whirlpool of emotions he drowned in as I spoke. Shite, I've even seen the clones bringing holograms of her about for a bit of relief during long missions, if you know what I mean. Making it impossible not to understand... I used my hand in a jerking motion in front of my crotch. Y you what? Anakin stammered. Patting him on the shoulder, I hopped in the ship, eager to try the ship out and leave Anakin before his operating system restarts. Right, mate? I'm off. Come down for a drink later if you're free, yeah? Bring Padme as well if you get called over for any more reviewing. Sliding the thruster up to 60%, I blasted out of the temple's workshop into the open skies of Coruscant leaving Anakin alone with the morbid thoughts of his wife being used as a GR ejaculation tool. P.S. I was fucking melted when writing this chapter. The folk on Patron done me a solid and pointed out the mistakes while I nursed a hangover. 8.p.t. Rion.com Dodgy Writer. Leishki Dissevige. Chapter 62. Ryloth. Fuck this man, I'm not cut out for this kind of shit. I said, locking lips with another cigarette and lighting up. The third one since we began walking ten minutes ago. We landed a hike and a half away, shitey chorus can't flying rules, and Ayla following them. Apparently I was a liability when flying in highly populated areas now, at least according to Ayla, should have never told her about the mishap with the B-Wing or my six-month flying ban courteously given to me by the chorus can't public safety department. Fuck the police. Relax. You'll do fine. Ayla chirped, most possibly taking pleasure in my unexpected bout of nervousness. Show the same confidence you had last night, and you'll be fine. Tam relaxed. The breakneck pace I was smoking at definitely never brought my lie to light. Fuck. I don't even know why I'm like this. Not the chain smoking, of course. I've long come to terms with my crippling addiction to alcohol and tobacco. If I enjoy it, I don't see the problem, even if those around me find it one. I've never been such a pussy about taking charge, not in battle, nor in bed. Hmm, the sex was phenomenal last night as well, Ayla's flexibility making a number of exotic positions possible, and I loved it. It's just that it feels all too real. Prior to now, I'd just been temporarily taking control of units here and there, 
I was never the one wearing the pants. Now thought if shit goes tits up, it's my arse that's on fire. It's a strange feeling that twisted and squirmed in my gut. So I drowned it out with the familiar burn of high percentage alcohol. Ah, much better. Liquid confidence indeed. I contently murmured, fucking emotions. That'll show them who's in charge. Senses blunted back down to appropriate levels, and the venators ramp moments away. I turned to Ayla, so you going to miss me while I'm gone? Not a chance, she replied, flicking her nails across the hilt of her lightsaber. With you gone, I'll finally be able to get a full night's rest. Laughing, I retorted, Hey, I don't force you to do anything. Last night was of your own making. I was completely fine with getting a good sleep, lying through my teeth. I could have survived without it, but abstaining from pleasure has never been my thing. Especially when it could be weeks before I see her again. Possibly more. Which was a strange thought considering we've been joined at the hip for the past year. Snorting in an unladylike manner we trudged up the long-ass ramp, pulling the repulsor lift crates along while making our way to the control bridge. On the way up we passed by busy clones doing a varying number of jobs, each of them giving a salute as their new general passed by, which admittedly did add to my already huge ego. Handing off the crates to some of the clones, we jumped into the turbo lift, Ayla asking, who is your clone commander? Hmm, a sound of uncertainty left my throat. Dunno. Ended up glossing over the stuff they sent me. The only thing I know is the battalion's name and how many ships I got. Stingy bastard man those GR suits, only leaving me a single Venator and an Acclimator. The Venator was fine, great in fact, it's one of the better ships the Republic has to offer. The latter, though, was pretty much useless for anything apart from troop transport and running away. Plus my legion can't even fill the whole thing up, limiting its usefulness further. Typical. Ayla shook her head. At least grace me with your legion's name. Smirking, I gave the force a silent thanks before saying, The 69th Legion. Taking a moment to process the information, Ayla placed a hand on her forehead and sighed. You've got to be kidding me. Laughing again, how funny is that? Surely Rail had to have had a hand in this. Don't believe this is just a coincidence. Not a chance. Only you, Lycan. Only you. She shook her head, just in time for the lift to screech to a halt. The doors whisked open to reveal the bustling control room, clones and ordinary members of the GR working in unison with high F. Efficiency. It took a moment for someone to notice our arrival, and when it happened, the clone commander took the initiative to alert everyone. Attention! He yelled, gravitas practically dripping from his voice, managing to grab and hold the attention of everyone in the room with just one word. Everyone stood at attention, prompting the commander to give his own salute and add, Good morning, General. A statement moments later that was echoed by the mass around him. Good morning, General. A tad too formal for my tastes, but I'll train it out of them soon enough. Casually reciprocating the gesture with two fingers while striding forwards, I said, All right, men, how's it going? I'm your new general. I'll be in your care from this moment forth. Continuing to walk toward the commander in white and green and the nervous young admiral in olive. Only to feel a bump in my side caused by a fluctuation in the force, I side-eyed Isla to see her looking at the men suggestively, all of whom were still standing ramrod straight. Aw, oh, fuck, I mumbled, most likely being heard by a few clones nearby, rectifying my mistake with a simple, at ease. They all went back to their task, and I got to speaking to the two in charge. Going in for the handshake, clone first. As you heard, I'm the new general, but you can call me Lycan. Removing his phase two helmet and grabbing my oversized mitts, Commander Gears at your service, he announced. Gears? There a story behind that name? I asked, feeling his sandpaper-like palms grasping my own. With the helmet removed, I could clearly see the tattooed pattern etched across his nose that ran from cheek to cheek. Yes, sir, but not an interesting one. Gears answered, releasing the tight grip we had on each other. Balak's man, make sure to tell me over a drink sometime, yeah? I clapped him on the shoulder and watched his mouth curl upwards. Same goes to you. Repeating the action with the Admiral. Skyzek Vandron, I'm the Admiral of this vessel, he told me. Unlike the Gears, his hand was soft and uncalloused. Looking him in the eye, I replied, could have guessed that much. 
There was nothing special about him, merely an exceedingly average white man with a little too much meat on his bones. If I was to hazard a guess, he was either a prodigy in the art of Navy combat or, more likely, came from a rich family whose connections pushed him up the ranks. How far are we till take off? I asked. Approximately 23 minutes, General. Skyzek responded, struggling to hold eye contact for more than a second before they moved to something else in the room. Good stuff. I'll leave that to you two then. I need to speak to General Sakura for a moment. Turning my attention to the only blue alien in the room, I leaned in close and whispered, Can you give us some privacy? Wordlessly, she took a step back and brought her hands in front of her chest. As she intertwined her fingers, a look of concentration dawned on Ayla's features. An instant later, I could feel the force from an ethereal barrier around us. That was when I knew we were hidden from sight. Closing the space once again, in a subdued voice I said, This is really important, so listen carefully. Giving me her undivided attention, seriousness taking over, she quietly responded, What is it? With a hand cupping my mouth as if I was about to whisper in her ear, I shifted around to her side. Before Isla could react, my free arm suddenly moved. My palm struck against a firm yet malleable surface that had a tendency to jiggle when an outside force touches it with any measure of strength. An audible clap traveled around the room, mixed in with a shrill squeal. It turned a few heads, but seeing nothing, they deemed it imagination. What was that for? Isla hissed in a hushed tone. Are you trying to embarrass me? Yes. The answer wasn't to Isla's liking, though, if her facial expression was anything to go by. T-kid, I kid, was just joking around, sorry. Holding my hands up in surrender, softening slightly, she rubbed D the area of impact. Honestly, you're so immature. Better than being boring, I shrugged. In all seriousness, though, I am looking into something. Should have confirmation by the end of the day. Coruscant time, so I'll be in touch. And am I going to be told what this is? She asked, making minor tweaks to the barrier as she spoke. It's just a hunch. If it turns out to be true, I'll tell you. Not like you'd believe me without any proof otherwise. I replied, You don't think I'd believe you? Ayla raised an eyebrow. Do you have no faith in me? Shaking my head, it's not like that. It's just that it's a bit out there. Don't want to sound daft by blabbing without any evidence. It's something serious. You know you can always trust me, she responded. Pausing for a moment, I thought it over. Just wait a couple of hours, all right? Till get back to you. Slowly nodding, she accepted. Fine, it's not like I will be waiting that long. I noticed her palms beginning to separate, and before we lost our little cloak of invisibility, I leaned in and gave Ayla a chaste kiss on the lips, just in time for our figures to become visible again. Compared to previous times, Ayla's reaction was tame, but I could still make out the slight reddening of her face. Goodbye, Lycan, she said, locking eyes long enough for me to reply in kind, then promptly turned and walked for the turbo lift, her scandalous hips swaying with every step, love watching her leave. The door closed on Isla, and I was left feeling surprisingly empty, nothing too mental, but that feeling in my belly made a reappearance after laying low for so long. Aw, oh, fuck. Something's coming. My stomach grumbled unhappily. Vibrations shot from my core to the back of my throat in a blink of an eye, and before I knew it, burr, perp. The clone commander and the admiral started with wide eyes, probably wondering what they got themselves into and if they could leave before it was too late. Fucking hell, breakfast must have not settled properly. I said shamelessly, ignoring the looks of both men and a few of the bridge crew. Right then, onwards to Ryloth. I'm off to test the toilets on this bad boy. Leaving the room and allowing the gobsmacked officers to set course and jump to hyperspace. Ick knew it. Of course I wouldn't be nervous about this gig. Shitty Coruscant street food. Never again. htephethanlightrend.com Stezen XD68 Bar Chapter 63 Ryloth 2 After a battle with my bowels and doing terminal damage to the officer toilets, I dragged myself off the pan and back to the bridge. With Ayla gone, the ship was now an uber cockfest. Not one vagina in a thousand light-year radius, or something like that. Not too sure what the distance conversion is in hyperspace. Now that my belly had stopped causing eruptions, I was free to listen to Commander Gear's debriefing. 
getting the info on the mission as a well-tied-together presentation sped the whole process up, made sure to compliment him for that. Still, a debrief was still a debrief, and therefore was fucking boring regardless. My god, it was only half an hour long, yet it felt so much longer. Forcing myself to concentrate, to save myself from getting a rerun of the whole thing, I survived, and all of the details were seared into my brain. I might have hotboxed the conference room in the process, but at least it made it through the lecture. Once it was over, I could finally get down to business. Nabbing a clone and dragging him into the medical bay. Wait, don't need to bag and drag. I'm the fucking boss here. Belter. Guess I'll take my pick on the way over. Striding through the monotonous gray halls, I passed by a couple of clones rushing here or there. Takeoff was a while ago, so I'm not completely sure why they're in such a hurry. Soon enough, I had reached my destination, the clones here mostly sitting around and chatting. Mostly about war-related topics, but a few with more colorful armor were shooting the breeze about more mundane topics, such as the sportball game that was on during the weekend. From what I could gleam, the 69th Legion was a mix of veterans and shinies, fresh out of Camino. It was easy enough to tell who was who, since the new soldiers had the typical battalion gear on, whereas the seasoned men had minor but recognizable decorations painted on their plastoid armor. Even for the ones who decided against customization, I could feel the difference. Fresh troopers all had similar emotions radiating off them, with few discrepancies, almost as if they were programmed to feel a certain way. If you compared them to droids, I could see the reasoning. Especially those B1s. Fuckers are a ball hair off sentience when they're left in the field for too long. For now, though, none of that's important. I just need a clone and a free CT scanner. I looked over the clones nearby, deciding on which to choose for what could possibly be the first inhibitor chip removal. Of course, that was after they got their almost chronic need for saluting out of the way. Honestly, man, I forgot how much I corrupted the Star Corps during my year's stint as commander. Missing the boys already. Fuck went on a tangent again. Fuck it, man. Shifting my eyes with every word I started, it bit, bird shit, hairy, fanny, juice. General. The ever-recognizable voice of a clone prevented me from finishing my traditional method of choosing something. I, what is it? I responded, taking knot of the black lines that ran down his wrist guard, as well as the similarly designed tattoos on each uncovered hand. It was all vaguely familiar. Tam Sergeant Jet. That name got the gear in my head churning. I've definitely heard it somewhere before. Is he a regular at the Dodgy Blaster? No. Surprisingly, I usually remember those who have upstairs passes. Subtly, I searched for anything that could give me a hint, and other than that he tattoos, there really wasn't much to go on. The only thing that stood out was the med pack he... Wait, I think I know who this is. I'm not sure if you remember, but... The clone was about to give me the easy way out, but having already done the mental gymnastics, I saved him the hassle. Geonosis, right? You were one of the medics stuck with me in Barris. The slight widening of the eyes and mouth left me satisfied. He probably thought I'd forgotten about him, and for the most part, I had. The difference in perspectives was obvious. I offhandedly gave him a name based on the brand of Alk, Ohal I was drinking. Yet for him, it was quite possibly the first time anyone had given him an identity beyond his CT number. Off, did I just work that out by myself without cheating with the Force? Look who's in touch with their emotions now, eh? going to rub that in a certain someone's face when I'm back. Aw, shite, I've just been staring into space. And so I heard that they were creating a new legion under your command. After that, I applied for a transfer from the Wondron 87th, and here I am. I could have taken the risk and guess what he was talking about prior to me tuning back in, but I took the safe option. Cheers, mate. Always a good start, that. Time to bring it home. Crazy story. Think you could tell me more in the medical bay. I was about to ask some of the men to come for a checkup. I tossed the idea out. Spinning his helmet around his hands, Jet replied, Checkup? What's it for? Don't know if you've heard, but back on Coruscant, there's been an influx of green flu cases in and about the area near the Temple and Senate districts. Need to make sure no one has caught it, otherwise we'll all be fucked for Ryloth. I lied, spinning the tail as I went. I'm sure there's some truth to it, 
There's definitely a flu going about Coruscant, but I couldn't quite remember if it was the green or the red flu. Either way, Jet bought it. We never left the ship while we were on Coruscant, so I doubt anyone will have it. But you can have me checked anyway, just to be sure. Good stuff, mate. Putting an arm around his shoulder, I ushered him into the medroom. Come on, then. It shouldn't take long. At least I hoped so. Surely it won't be a hard find with all the tech in here. Chapter 64, Ryloth 3 Comfy? I asked the prone trooper. Shifting slightly, Jet replied, Comfy as can be. You'll get used to it. I paused, fiddling with the control pad, one definitely made for smaller fingers. After a few nights out with me, you'll come to appreciate them. With his helmet off, I could see the same lined base tattoos he had on his hands running down his neck. It was a sort of reversed version of my own, where instead of the lines being tattooed, everything else was, leaving contrasting lines of pale skin on the otherwise black canvas. Now settled and ready for scanning, Jed asked, Were you serious about that? Still unbelieving of the truths I spout. O oh, thee of little faith. What, about getting tanked after we're done cleaning up Ryloth? Fuck yeah, mate. I responded, finally hitting the right sequence of buttons to get the machine going. Wouldn't that, you know, be impossible? Patient Zero spoke, unsure of his own words. Won't we just be called somewhere else after Ryloth? Sighing, I snuck a hand into my robes, pulling out a flask and necking a swig of its poisonous contents. The action was filled with such polished precision you could call it mastery. Sighing again, with content this time around, I started to educate my subordinate. Listen, here's how this is going to go. Me, you, and the rest of the 69th are going to go to Ryloth, desecrate the separatist resistance, and liberate the planet. The clone watched me intently, taken by the unbridled confidence I exuded while speaking. Then we'll have a massive party. I'm talking about a planet spanning, beat blasting, babe banging, beer tannin' fun fest with the twies. We'll buy so much co-fucking booze, the planet's economy will finally recover enough to not rely on slave expiration to stay afloat. I could see it already. The sheer scale of the sesh will have Obi-Wan frothing at the mouth from the amount of Republic funds pumped into it. Alan the name of a good team humanitarian aid. Or is it alienitarian? Specitarian? Fuck if I know. So quit your fucking pussy talk and let me scan you. Can't have my boys being sick and croaking before that, can I? I stated, finalizing my speech with the press of a key started the scanning. I could sense that Jet had much to say on the matter, but obediently followed orders and lay completely still, a linear line of sky-blue lasers scanned up and down his face. Fuck sakey, man. This is taking ages. Anything general? Hunched over, I stared at the screen. Nothing yet. Don't think the droids are working. Give it a bit longer. Fucking shitey med droid. Why is it coming up blank? Am I really in a different Star Wars universe? Are the clones not chipped? Is Palpatine not an evil mastermind? Agitated, I spat, fucking piece of shite, thumping my fist across the console that refused to find anything abnormal. I was about to give the inanimate object another walloping when, lo and behold, a flashing red dot spontaneously appeared on screen. Of course, a bit of well-directed anger does the job. Clicking on the anomaly, the screen flickered to a close-up of the weird, fatty amalgamation of bioengineering. It sort of looked like a bit of muscle tissue, yet upon close inspection was way out of place being so close to the brain. The beeping alerted Jet to the problem. Tilting his head slightly, he questioned, What's wrong? Am I infected? Shaking my head, I answered, Nope, you're all good on that front. The scanners picked up a foreign mass near the brain. Now worried Jet added, Is it a tumor? Replying quickly to put a swift half to his worrying, Relax, mate. Not a tumor. Nothing dangerous like that. Probably better out than in, though. At least not to him. To can have it taken out right now if that's cool with you. Would only take five minutes, tops. I told Jet. The surgery machines were stationed behind the bed in case of an urgent operation. Rubbing his head, Jet nodded and was slid inside the cylindrical mass of metal. I saw a needle getting jabbed into the area around the chip, anesthesia most likely, before several other robotic arms poked and prodded away at his head. The full thing never even took five minutes. The operation was over before I could finish my fag, which by all accounts is ridiculously fast. Jet moved to a sitting position, 
gently prodding at the gauze on the side of his head. Is that it finished? He asked. Taking a final draw of my sig before snuffing it out, I gave him a thumbs up. That's you, mate. We won't arrive at Ryloth for another couple of hours, so you can go chill with the boys if you want. What about the thing that was cut out of my head? Jet wondered, standing up off the bed and shaking his stiff legs. Tilting my head at the machine, I said, It's just being processed. You know what these droids are like. Always trying to micromanage everything. Rolling his shoulders, Jet made a move to leave. Maybe to go talk to his squad about the massive after-party I was planning. Before he could exit the bay, I stopped him. Here. Hovering my hand a few inches above the incision, I channeled the force into the scabbing tissue. Using a slither of my voracious magic-powered vitality as the fuel, the cut started to rapidly heal. Ripping off the surgical dressing, which elicited a jolt of pain from Jet, I told him, There we go. Can't have you walking around looking like that before the fighting's even started. Thanks, General, Jet saluted with appreciation. Fighting's even started. Thanks, General, Jet saluted with appreciation. With that, Jet left, leaving me alone and giving me the opportunity to store the inhibitor chip for safekeeping. A minute or so passed since Jet's departure and the chip was stuffed into a sealed glass container. Giving it a quick one over to check if any abnormalities had come about since its removal, I moved it and myself over to one of the spare beds before pulling out my holodisc and attempting to contact Ayla. New chapter is coming soon. Weekly power status. See who voted and 200 plus. You may also like more a getting a reborn Asan the evolution villain at privacy and cookie settings. Ex sugar mom. OP sect of genius. Girlfriend. Managed by Google. Complies with IABTCF. Sok A6SKAEA 